Hello, I'm Matt Evans and welcome to Board Game Replay. Now in this series you're going to be joining our group for a post-game discussion where we recap our experience with the game and then cut back to replay clips of some of the highlights during our session. Now today we're going to be playing Kingdom Death Monster. Now this is a very unique, very big cooperative game experience. This game, this game is actually built as a uh, cooperative tabletop game experience. And I think that's probably the best way to describe this game because it's doing a lot of different things. Uh, there's some miniatures combat fighting, there's some resource management, and there's actually a lot of story-driven, almost choose-your-own-adventure style events happening in this game. It's all kind of mixed into one into this massive, massive game experience. Uh, what you're seeing here in the table is only a fraction of the components of the game. As you can see with the large size of the box, it's just absolutely chock full of uh, cards, tokens, and, and miniatures especially. There's tons and tons of miniatures in there. What we have up here, as I said, is all you need to get started with the base of the game because this game is played over uh, a long campaign, over 25 lantern years, or basically 25 game sessions. Now that may seem a bit overwhelming, but the way this game is designed is to gradually lead you into the mechanical components of the game through the story. So right here, this is actually the rule and storybook, kind of all in one. Starting from the very first page, it starts giving you the flavor of the game, the story of the game, uh, and then just a couple of pages later, it's got you giving you the, the setup rules for the, for the first encounter that we've got here in front of us for the prologue. So it'll teach you things as you go. There's not a lot of preparation that, aside from uh, assembling some of the initial miniatures that come with the game. You don't need to build all of the miniatures in the box to start out. You only need to build a few of them to get into the game right away. And just to give you a quick idea of the story of this game, you are playing as survivors that wake up initially in this just bizarre, nightmarish world. They have no idea where they are. They have no idea who they are or anyone else is and they have to band together to try and survive. They're going to basically be trying to establish a settlement and build a colony out of it and survive from generation to generation. And the way they're going to be doing that is they're going to be uh, fighting off these brutal monsters, um, trying to kill these monsters to gain resources from it, and in doing that they're going to be building weapons and, and tools and gear, armor and that sort of thing, and they're going to be using that to build up their colony, research new technologies like languages, uh, new survival skills and things like that, and then all the while progressing through this storybook and facing greater and greater threats as time goes on. Now as I mentioned, we're only going to be playing through the prologue of this game today. So if you're worried about spoilers, there's really not much that's going to be revealed here. It's just going to be the very introductory component to the game, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But at the same time, this should also give you a pretty good idea of what to expect from this game, kind of get a feel for the mechanics of the game and how the campaign is going to work going forward. And now, one more thing before we jump into the game, I'm just going to jump down to the table real quick and sort of explain uh, the basic elements of how this combat that we're about to jump into works. Now we're looking down at the showdown board here, and the way this phase of the game works, it's basically a battle to the death between a monster and our survivors. And the way this works is it happens in rounds. The first thing that happens is the monster activates, and then each survivor is going to activate in any order that they choose, and then it goes back to the monster again. And we just continue that until either the monster's dead or all the survivors are dead. And the first thing that's going to happen here is the monster is going to activate, as I mentioned. And the behavior of the monster when they activate is going to be based on this AI deck. This AI deck is built per the, the rules of this introduction here, and in future sessions, it's built from a number of different things. I won't go into detail with them. But basically, this AI deck is, is customized. There's a lot of different ways this monster can act, and depending on the difficulty of the monster, there are more AI cards in here, as well as more variety and more difficult things. So first, the monster is going to activate... I'm going to flip a card over and I'm going to resolve it. Now he's going to activate Claw. First thing he does is he picks a target, and there's a list of different targets he can choose from. I'm going to pick the one at the top and then go down until I meet one that I can fulfill. So this says closest threat facing in range. My survivor is facing him. He is the closest one. He's the fewest number of spaces. And uh, threat means that I'm actually standing. I'm not knocked down or anything like that. So this line is going to pick me as a target. Then moving down here, he's going to move and attack that target. So he can move up to six, so he can easily catch up with me. And then he's going to make an attack with a speed of two, an accuracy of two, and a damage of one. Speed is the number of dice you roll, and accuracy is the number that you need to roll in order to be able to land a hit. So this monster's really good at hitting us. He's rolling two dice, he rolled two nines. So those are two hits that he's going to land on my survivor. The way that's resolved now, he's hit me. I have to determine where he's hit me. So I'm going to use these damage location dice and figure out where I've been hit. And that looks like I've been hit in the head and the chest. Now, I can look over here at my character sheet, and I can look for any armor that I might have over those particular parts of my body. My head, I don't have anything. And my chest, I also don't have anything. My body, I have nothing there. So what I have to do is I have to go over here to the right and have to fill in a light wound 
for my body. And then I have to fill in a, uh, a heavy wound for my head. Now, whenever you take a heavy wound, it knocks your character down and you're not allowed to activate that round. You'll stand up at the beginning of your next activation. Since I want to show you combat, I'm, I want to attack this guy this round. I'm actually going to use my survival up here, right? Instead of taking that hit to my head, I'm going to use my survival to use a special ability called dodge. These are like death-defying abilities that you can do. So I'm going to get rid of this here. I'm going to go back down to zero survival. And I'm just going to dodge that shot to my head. So moving on to my survivor's turn, or as they call it, a survivor act. I now get one movement and one activation in any order that I like. I'm going to choose my movement first, and I'm going to move my five movement, one, two, three, four, five, to get around behind the monster, because that's where he has a blind spot. It's essentially almost a weak spot. And I'm going to use my action to, or my activation, to use this founding stone. This is basically like a smashed piece of stone from the floor here and there with all these faces on it, and it's, and it's been sharpened. So I'm going to use that as my weapon. This weapon has a speed of two and an accuracy of seven. So I need to roll two dice, and I'm going to hit on a seven plus. But... Since I'm standing behind him in his blind spot, I get an additional plus one to my roll. So I'm going to roll these two dice. All right, so I have an eight and a two. This one's a miss. I can just throw it away. And with this eight, I've now hit the monster. So I'm going to draw a card from his hit location deck. Again, this is another deck that's assembled specifically uh, for this monster, and the, in each one of them are unique. All right, so I've hit the beast's heel, but it doesn't mean I've wounded him yet. I now have to roll another d10, adding the strength of my weapon, to try and equal or exceed his toughness. Now, his toughness is six, so I'm gonna have to roll at least a five because I've got a plus one here from this founding stone. So let's see if I can do it. All right, I've rolled a five. That deals a wound to him. I'm now gonna look at this card just to make sure there's nothing on here, nothing that the monster does as a reaction to me wounding him. There's nothing here. So I'm gonna discard this hit location and I'm gonna damage him by drawing the AI card off the top of the deck and placing it face down in his wound stack. So what that means is the AI deck actually doubles as the monster's health deck. The more you hit him, the more his AI and his behavior is being discarded. He's getting less and less clever. He's getting slower and weaker because basically he's getting injured. And also, so, so once you've exhausted all of the A cards in this deck, once you've wounded him that number of times and there's nothing left here, all these cards are gone. You need to wound him one more time and then he's dead for the round. That's how you defeat the monster. Now there's a few more things I wanted to cover as far as hits and, and damage against the monster. So let me give you two more hit locations. Let's say I, I rolled those dice back here and I actually hit the monster twice. Let's say I rolled this here and I've landed two hits and I, I draw a hit location card for each potential damage I'm going to do to him. So I've hit him in the tail and the ribs. You notice on this ribs one, if I land a wound, there's actually going to be a reaction from the monster. He's going to do something in reaction to me hitting him in the ribs. The reflex over here, this means that even if, if I hit or miss with that damage roll, he's still going to trigger an ability. This one is like a movement roll where he drags somebody and pulls them in a straight line. That's pretty brutal. Now down at the bottom here, you can also see these have this lantern symbol, which means if you roll a lantern 10, which is a, a little picture of a lantern here, it's the 10 on the die, you're gonna critically wound that monster. And each of these different locations has a different critical wound effect. Now critical wounds are really, really good. They generally will cripple the monster in some way, uh, give you some kind of unique resource, maybe when you land a critical hit on that particular area. Such as here, you, you actually cut off the lion's tail if you land a critical hit when attacking that location. Now, when these cards are out, you actually get to choose which order you want to, to roll on. So this one here where he reacts, regardless of whether or not you wound him, would be probably a bad one to start with. You'd want to start with this one here where he only actually has the negative effect if you wound him. All right, so that should give you a pretty good idea of what to expect here today. I mean, this is, again, just scratching the surface of... The, the basic introduction to the game. Again, our character sheets are, are basically empty. We're fighting a, a pretty basic monster at this level, and we don't really have much in our, in, our, in our characters except for some very basic equipment. But that should give you an idea how the game flows. And I think with that being said, we can get to our game. Last, one more hit, he's dead. All right, Brian, I'm gonna go first, because you're slow. Yeah. Right to the face. Glory Face on. punch. That's what you Four get. Four and one, nice miss and miss. miss. Brian, your turn. Brian, get in here. Let me shimmy you up there. <laughs> no! <laughs> I died. <laughs> he's such a threat with that Oh, uh, You're knocked down, you can't fight. Brain damage. All right, go. 
Yes, hit. that's a hit. Hit location. End it. End it. Beast chest. It's his chest. Just, Just roll a die. He only got one choice. See what happens. He's a five. Oh, five! Are you kidding? Don't, me? That's, that's, that's don't even cocked. don't even it look at that. It wasn't cocked. It was, it was fine. fine. Don't even Landed. think about it. Landed a five. Landed a five. The light is dead. Good call, Chris. The beast is dead. Oh my god. That was <laughs> super easy. <laughs> All right, survivors are victorious. Collect your rewards by scavenging the monster's corpse. The survivors earn resources. This is in addition to any resources earned from critical wounds. Take nice. out the white lines resource cards, shuffle, and then draw four. Nice. Take out the basic resource cards and shuffle and draw four. All right, the, the white line is dead, and we're back in our settlement phase here. This is our first time through this, so we were just kind of learning it as we go. We just formed our settlement. Yes, so this is our here. settlement formed. What do we, we name our settlement? Uh, Valona. Valona. That's cool. It means survival um, or something. Yeah, yeah, there's like a whole sheet. Chris, yeah. I'm sure that sheet. Sure. Yeah, it was a whole sheet of like, you, you kind of build up for all the various things. It's two-sided, I believe, right? Yep. So our survivors are listed here. We have four named and eight unnamed. Yeah, we actually there was a story event that let us roll a die, and we had additional survivors that came into our camp here. Well, they so were, we met them at this location. Yes, we yeah. found a bunch of people, and we're like, "Yeah, we'll settle here. That's fine. We'll keep it sort of." I mean, story wise, there hasn't been a lot of story events, but we won't spoil anything in terms of that. But we wanted to show this because this is kind of the, we never got to this part when we played this out of Gen Con. This is like the whole, like we're back at our settlement. These are the different locations. We started out with this lantern horde one. Well, first yeah. of all, there's a timeline yeah, here. We set up our settlement. We Our survivors returned. We gained endeavors, which um, are used to do stuff. We got yeah. one for each surviving person. Yeah, we came back with um, four endeavors ready to go. And then we drew a settlement event. For the first time, you draw the first day, which is uh, static. After that, you draw from a deck and have a random event happen. It was cool. It told us a story. It kind of told us what to do to, to set up some, some other things. That's where it described how um, we... Found all these people. We skipped the death count, right? Because we didn't have anybody die. Well, we, we counted. We zero. counted. Zero. 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 <laughs> uh, updating the timeline. Chris, yep. you did that. Yep. So the lantern year uh, finished. And then what was the event on one? The Oh, returning survivors. Yeah. So okay. the first um, so lantern is, year was returning survivors. Yeah. The timeline is basically the game is, again, supposed to take place over like something like 25 lantern years. Lantern so we're just years, updating yep. our first year. And then develop. This is kind of where everything sort of came out of here. The first thing so, we started with is this initial location for the Lantern Horde. This is the camp that we have found after our first fight. Just a pile of lanterns. And um, you have a couple of options here. You can spend some of those endeavors that we had to build uh, these different these different places. We had four, so we built one of each. We built a Bonesmith, a Skinnery, and an Organ Grinder. And that's what all these are out over here. And then we spent an additional innovation, uh, one of each of these things, an, an endeavor, a bone, an organ, a hide, from all the resources that we gained from killing the, the White Lion. To get innovate. Uh, where's our innovate? It doesn't sign. We went back to the box. We went back to the box. That's all right. We have the we have the language. Um, we can get so that. the innovation we got was a hovel. So now we actually have like a shelter. Um, yeah. So it looks like the hovel goes down here, and we also have language now. Yeah. So these are these are things that we're going to have going forward. We got this one from the innovate action that we took here, and then the language was a story based thing. We yeah, that have. came with it. So that each of those increases our survival limit, which. Let's each character have up to that like that much survival. Yeah, and survival is a pretty important stat. It lets you do dodge, dodging, or encourage, encouraging that sort of thing. So now we've got all these different places we can go and make weapons to go back with. So that's what all of this is up here. This was us. All these resources you can see up here were all resources we had from um, fighting the white lion and critting the white lion and doing all these different things. So do you guys want to talk about why we chose what we chose for gear? To go. So right now we're picking. We're using these places to build out the gear for our next potential outing to fight yeah. something yeah i think the first thing that's important to recognize is that we did get lucky during the fight itself that we we got three extra resources from the cr the crits at the beginning mm -hmm. so we're starting with almost 50 percent more resources than we're given because we got eight for winning True. but we got yeah. three additional from the fight itself which we could have gotten we could have gotten different crits yeah we don't know if, your point we're not oh yeah this is the first time i play it so maybe it's common but we did get the shimmering main which was a pretty rare one which counts as two uh, hide basically two hides yep yeah, yeah so in essence we got yeah so four we more got resources four, yeah. than we were guaranteed yeah, and you can see down here on the side these are all the different options we could have built the different things we can could have built and they have a cost associated yeah. with them there's hides on here so the weapons all require at least one bone and we only had three bone so we went and we picked three weapons. Then the last one, since we had extra hide, we found this hood, 
which lets the wearer of it use their action to look at the AI deck and kind of basically you predict what the lion's going to do. Which is um, amazing. And then you can kind of call it out to your friends and be like, oh, he's going to pummel the next person he attacks. Yeah, and you can do that because we line them up with this little blue synergy here. You can see on this card here, it has this little blue icon, and that gives us the ability to look at the top of the deck because it's attached it's to something. If it's paired blue. with another blue. Yeah. And these aren't attached. We've, we've actually chosen which survivors these go on, but you don't really need to know that. It was just more, we wanted to show you why we chose what we chose for gear. So this was one of the survivors is going to wear this outfit, the rawhide vest and the, and the rawhide headband. And we're using this shimmering mane to pay for it because there's two hides involved. This counts as two. And then, what else is the rest? This, the Bone Axe. You guys can explain why you chose that. So the Bone Axe is one of the stronger ones because it, it's every weapon requires a bone. There's a sword and a dagger. They require just one bone. The Axe takes a bone and an organ. Um, but with that, you get... Um, so it's two dice, like most weapons, but it's a six or higher to hit. So 50% chance to hit. Yeah. And then um, you get plus three um, strength, which is what you use to overcome the uh, target's toughness. Um, and then also... Once per attack, if you critically wound, you can cause an additional wound, which is really strong. And again, these have the, the same synergy. They're connected, so they, they kind of give you... Uh, these guys don't quite have it yet. They haven't built out the blue and the red, which would give an additional evasion. But that was our general idea was to give these guys some pretty strong weapons. Somebody here that kind of just has some good ability to, you know... In, you know yeah, some good can, armor, because he's got two armor there. Yeah, plus, since we only have three weapons, he can attack with his fists, but... The other thing you could do instead of attacking is sit back and kind of use that for your yeah. action. This rawhide headband requires an action to do that looking at the AI deck, but that could be so... That, that's better than an attack, in right. my opinion, because just being able to see what's upcoming is, is huge. Yeah. And then what's the last one over there, Chris? You, you set that one up, right? Yeah, that that's just the, the fourth person we gave to a ranged ability, so that way they might be able to stay Safe. out of the, the range of the attacker because they didn't get any armor. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully they can skirt around the edges. It does have a range of six, which we don't know what the speeds of the animals are, but the assuming upcoming, we can yeah. get one, yeah. one slow on the person. Because during the fight, we did get... Um, minus two movement. Yeah, yeah we did get minus two, two yeah. mo movements to the person. So. Sweet. All right, well, yeah, and I think from that, there's a few other things in, in terms of finishing up our our, uh, our settlement phase here, but that's the majority of it. We got into, like, the development phase, kind of got into really the meat of the game for how we're going to build up our survivors for the next thing. And, uh, yeah, good to go. Okay, so we finished up our first Lantern year. I think that was the first Lantern yep. year, right, of, uh, yeah. of Kingdom Death Monster, and we wanted to give our, our initial impressions on that. Uh, again, if you had seen uh, earlier this year when we were at Gen Con, we posted a demo video of this game. <laughs> We had gotten while we were out there, and we were really impressed with it. We thought it was awesome. Uh, it was just kind of one of the scenes. We had fought a white lion, this sort of predetermined scenario. A much stronger scenario. white lion. A much stronger white lion than we played here today, but it was kind of a pre-built thing where they had given us... We had actually a certain amount of damage on us. some weapons and stuff, had some too. gear. Uh, this was us starting out straight from the first, the prologue of the game, and now we have gone through that. Uh, this was... I, I, th I thought, going back and, and looking at even the footage that we had filmed at Gen Con, I was like, how could we ever have an experience that captured sort of yeah. what we had out there because the, the match was so close, it was right out of the wire. But I think what we played today was was super awesome. I think it still captured that same feel of, like, desperation and, like, fighting this impossibly hard creature. Yeah, even without any... We had no gear. We had a belt and a piece of stone as a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> and it was still cool. The experience felt very much like a tutorial. Um, going through the motions. Yep. But the thing is, is that... It was a tutorial in an entertaining way that introduced all of the aspects of the game that you needed to learn, which was mm -hmm. not us reading a book together and yep. looking at each other. So everyone <laughs> everyone got through this experience well, but it also introduced all of this stuff that you're going to be able to do mm -hmm. in the future. So it's um, laid out all of your choices that you're going to make. It kind of hinted at what the future is going to bring, and I'm really excited for what this game's going to become. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very good point. I, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, today I thought was good, but it, it was more of building for, I want to see more of it. That is a good point. Yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's was, a strong point. This is the best tutorial I've ever played. Yeah, this is good by call. far the best good tutorial call. I've been through. <laughs> that's really what I was trying yeah. to say. You know, like, what we experienced with the fighting, it was, like, yeah. it was very desperate. Like, it was cool. Like, Jeremy, I mean, you mostly got your ass kicked. Yeah, like, I, you were getting I, wrecked. You were great at it, though. You were bad. really good at that. <laughs> I was the best tank. Yeah. AI card deck, here's how he's going to activate. Yep. He's going to maul. Pick a target. Victim of grab last round. We didn't do that. Closest knockdown survivor in range. <laughs> okay, that would be Jeremy. Now he's going to move and attack. He's not going to move at all because he doesn't need to move. Uh, he's going to hit you with a speed of two. So, so same thing with two. And hopefully you'll target gains one bleeding token this if he hits you with after damage. If he Accuracy is two plus. It's all right. 
Not oh, all right. That's two hits. That's really close though. Okay, give me those two things. Oh. All right. Yeah, that's okay. Nice. That's a head wound. So I'm dodge the head wound probably. So I'll take one to the body. Ow. Take the head injury because you're getting knocked down anyway. Oh, yeah, that's true. What happens if, you if I get in the head later? I'm dead. But you can dodge. It's a yeah, one in five so. chance. I don't know. I, I'm thinking save the dodge yeah. until you absolutely need it, dude. Whoa. I'm right just there. saying because he's about to yeah, knock you fine. down. I'm knocked down and knocked down. So I was knocked down. <laughs> he's like, I got knocked down by his hit, and then the end of this effect is all I'm going to knock you down. You got a heavy so head. So did like, I fall through the map yeah, or something? like four feet underground right now. <laughs> I felt but, that same synergy, you know, that teamwork that we were going for, but yeah, in a very condensed manner to teach yeah, us the game. Yeah. I agree with that. I mean, it was definitely a tutorial, but like, there were still parts where like, it was still exciting, like, what's going to happen next? And mm -hmm. like, it wasn't just like, so now move your character and yeah. attack him. Like, yeah. We were still planning out moves and planning who, what's the best yeah. position to be standing in. You know, hey, you make sure you're this many spaces away because he can turn. So the, the tactical elements were definitely there. Yeah, and we choose to not do plans. And... <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm not to, disagreeing with your plan. We're trying to was keep, great. We're trying to keep it high adrenaline, Chris. Yeah. High adrenaline. At one point, we had the lion's intestines that had fallen out, and he was crippled. <laughs> he, was, he was crippled. He was potentially hurting himself every turn by stepping on his own intestines. And um, I mean, Chris, in, probably because he was the smartest one of all of us, wanted to just play it safe and say, "Let's just run around until he kills himself by stepping yeah, on his you know, intestines." You know what happens to people that fight honorably? <laughs> they die. <laughs> they generally do die. We yeah. get we get golden lion manes. That's, That's true. what happens. We got way better. Oh, all right, <laughs> we got Touché. way better resources. Yeah. You done good. And we actually took the the starting weapons. Everybody gets like a starting weapon. And we just chose to just, there's a special ability where you can just huck that thing at them and auto-crit the monster. And we were thinking, we better save these weapons. And then we just all huck them, like, within one round of the game. I want to I wanna do a, I want to throw it. So now you take a hit location. So you're throwing it, right? It's already shuffled. Yeah. So take your thing, put it in the box, your stone yeah. card. And then... Beast Paw. Your attack destroys the white lion's foot. It loses its leverage. The white lion gains minus one movement token. You gain one lion claw uh, resource. Nice. Permanent injury, broken foot. Ignore the effects of grab. Wow. That is nice. awesome. awesome. All right, so <laughs> everybody throw. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, something you had, different about it. But. Brian, Brian made the best point of all, and, and I'll let you explain what that was. Yeah, they it, it auto crits them, and each crit does something. It like maims the character or does extra wounds. And each time that we end up maiming him, it was like he loses accuracy, he loses movement. Yeah. Or like the one where his intestines fell out and he could have a chance to auto hurt himself. Yep. The movement was the best because we got him to have lower movement than us and we could literally outrun him the rest of the game. The yeah. other thing was it auto hit too. You didn't have to yeah, roll the hit. Yeah, the auto hit. Yeah. That was, that's a powerful build. Auto hit, auto crit. You didn't have to risk anything. It yeah. was, here's a guaranteed hit. And, and the, crit. And the hits aren't just, it's not damage, it, it removes his abilities, because mm -hmm. his abilities are right. the are his health pool. And his you just are like, that's an automatic four moves you don't have to worry about. And you have a chance of removing some of the ridiculous ones, like possibly an AoE mm -hmm. claw swipe. Right. right. And, and back to what Chris was saying, like, yeah, this wasn't uh, as eventful as it was when the last time he had played. No. And I think part of that was due to the fact that we had hit... We had crushed him with those crits early on and took... I mean, that's that was four damage. So I, I could, mine didn't damage because it was another effect that came in. But at least three damage and then some maiming abilities that happened yeah. to him. So now he was just weaker. We didn't see some of his strongest attacks because we hit him out early. And, you know, for yeah. example, you cut off his testicles. I did. <laughs> Jeremy... Uh, no, one of them, Chris blew up his foot or something. Yeah, yeah. so we, <laughs> one of them removed the ability for him to grab. Yeah, that was um, huge. And that there was, was like being three, off. three places where he would have grabbed if he could have. Yeah, so. that's true. Yeah, that's big. The game starts off awesome though. Like th thematically, like you you just wake up in this room full of faces made out of stone, that's and this monster is just attacking you. You don't even know how to talk. You yeah. don't even know what. Like it's it's a tutorial, yeah, but you just it, the the way they explain. I'm not going to give away like the story you read in the mm. beginning, but the the pictures, everything, the board, it just starts off awesome. And then if, if you do end up killing and making it, you get to build this entire little town. And then you get to, like, see how much cool stuff that you can make. And then you gear up, go out, do it again, and then come back and build your base up more. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, like, the rule book is, this is the rule book, and it literally just starts, first page is art and story. Yeah. And explaining why you're starting out as a character with nothing. Right. And then yeah. you go from there. And it teaches yeah. you everything you need to know. First mission, like we said, is mainly a tutorial, but... It was the most fun story I've played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fact, and normally I don't like books that include that fill too much flavor into the actual rule giving, but this actually found a nice balance between 
teaching you the game, but also giving you story in between elements. It wasn't like cool. thematically teaching you. Like it, the rules were very much the rules. Like they didn't yeah. like put stupid flavor into the rules that makes it confusing well, and you, hard to understand, but it yeah. tells you the story and then teaches you the game at the same time. Well, yeah, they did it smart. The story is a huge mystery. So right. yeah. there's nothing to give you. It's just like, wait, what the heck's going on? Go figure it out. Yeah, so that's cool. It's cool. It leaves you in mystery without making you read, a I don't know, two pages of text, you know, before yeah. you even start the game. Yeah, that would probably be a turnoff for some people. And, to be and like, the fact that the game is as big as it is, yeah. it's a gigantic box. This is know. the campaign, and we're on page, like, yeah. six. I, I'm glad <laughs> the, way it, the way it started couldn't have been better. I mean, just yeah. to, keep, to teach you the game and, and being able to see how this whole scenario works, I'm really excited to go further. Yeah. Wish we had more time in the day. We're ready to play more right now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's enough talking. Let's uh, play again. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> All right. Done. Hey, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.